My name is Job Ebenezer. I am the president of Technology for the Poor, a nonprofit organization that I founded in 2006 to design and to, in, in, to disseminate and to train the low income people all over the world in simple technologies. As food production is something that everybody has, ought to be concerned about, I wanted the poor people to have a system by which they can produce at least the vegetables and fruits. So one of the criteria for that is the cost of the system. So I chose low cost materials and also easily available materials for the less income people to use and to produce fresh vegetables and fruits. In 1993, when I was working for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America as their hunger coordinator, hunger education director, I was uh, intrigued by the fact that uh, the ur urban agriculture seems to be one of the long-term solutions for food security and food scarcity. Besides, local production enables us to ensure that the food that we eat comes from a known source, may be produced by us, and therefore we would be careful in what we add to the plants, the chemicals and so on. And also, it is uh, uh, in terms of cost for the amount of investment you make in these systems the amount you get back, return on your investment, is much, much higher. And so I started in 1993 to use the wading pools, children's wading pools, which are inexpensive, less than $10 per pool. And you can use topsoil, peat moss, and compost or manure in good proportion, like I use 70% topsoil, 20% peat moss and 10% manure compost. It's just not a magic formula, you can use them in a variety of ways. Or you can use the <coughs> potting soil that comes with all these things fixed already. Well, the initial investment to set up a system like this, the pool and the topsoil and other components come out to be under $20. Now in a pool like this, depending on what you grow, if you grow a lot of uh, herbs and other things, you can recover more, much, most of it in the first year, or all of it in the first year, and also make some money. Or in a, my rule of thumb is you can produce about 25 pounds of good quality vegetables or more, depending on what you grow. If you grow squash and cucumber and all that, that way it goes up. So using a magic formula of two pounds per, uh, two dollars per pound for these vegetables, you have produced, you got fifty dollars worth. And more than that, the exercise you get and the joy you get in gardening is, cannot be, uh, you cannot add dollar figures to those things. As you can see, these peas were planted the end of April or the third week of April. And now they have already started to produce. So we start with cool crops and uh, in next year I'm going to start even in March and then bring it out in April. And so by May comes we can harvest cool crops like peas, like uh, Swiss chard, like carrots and others. <coughs> and then the climate temperature rises to 70s or so in the month of May, we can start to put down tomato seedlings, cucumber, eggplant, okra, peppers, and all the other squash and so on. They are, they are warm weather crops. So you can also come back in the month of uh, September end or so and start it all over again with cool crops. So theoretically we can have three rotations of crops 
and therefore my estimation before was based only on the warm warm climate crops tomatoes and things like that so the the leaves and the herbs and other things that you get out of the cool crops uh, i have not measured it so i cannot put a dollar figure and what i'm saying is for a investment of under 30 40 dollars you can recover more than that in one season so the uh, you can go to my website www.technologyforthepoor.com and go to the section called urban agriculture where i describe not only how to set up a wading pool garden but also old tire garden and feed sack garden i'll show you what a feed sack garden looks like we have a small demonstration and also a tire garden uh, basically that's what we uh, that's what i've been doing for many many years but of late i thought uh, i was approached by a fellow from england john pentagast he is a recycling man so he wrote uh, he contacted me and said uh, that he uses the one gallon milk jugs uh, because the recycling rate for these milk jugs at least in some of these areas not in the west coast or east coast but in the middle the middle east and other middle west and other places is less than 30 percent which means 70 percent of them uh, end up in uh, landfills now these are nice containers uh, zero dollars <laughs> and then we we can use another recycled recyclable product called the pallets now these pallets are used by the uh, transportation people in millions and millions and after serve several uses these things are discarded and uh, we found a lot of discarded uh, you can't see from here pallets next door <laughs> so we actually asked the fellow and uh, transferred them here 